Hello everyone and welcome back to Hyperlyceum. This video was provided by Salman Hosseini and I am the narrator, Shadi Ayati. In this video, we're going to model functional gradient materials, FGM, with Abacus software using the USD FLD subroutine. As you know, in the previous video, the cylinder was made by solid elements. In this simulation, however, we're going to use shell elements. And we're going to apply required changes in Abacus setting and in the coding. Firstly, I'm going to explain shell elements and then I'm going to give you the definition of integral points and section points in Abacus software. Next, division simulation is explained in the form of an example. After that, I will explain how to write the USD FLD subroutine code for FGM. And finally, the results are examined. As you can see in this picture, when shell elements are modeled in Abacus, they're shown with the thickness of zero. To calculate the changes of shapes or to do mechanical uploads, it is necessary to clarify the upside and downside of each element. To do so, a normal vector is generated for each element which starts from the lower side that is called face S and E G and ends to the upper side that is called face S V O S, which means the direction of the normal vector is from lower side to upper side which is S P O S. It is the same for hex elements and tetrahedrite elements. It is obvious that the lower side is called SNEG and the upper side is called SPOS. In the full integration element, like the S4 element, there are four integration points on each surface. In this part, the definition of integral points and property module of Abacus is explained. In this part, the thickness of shell elements is defined. In this part, to place section points, the thickness integration rule, which can be either Simpson rule or Gauss, is selected. In this part, the number of section points through thickness is defined, which is 5 on default. But the abacus help suggests 9 section points through thickness, where higher accuracy is required. Here, you can see the placement of section points through thickness based on Simpson rule, which is the top surface of shell. Here, you can see the placement of section points through thickness based on Gauss rule. Here, you can see the section points through thickness of shell at the location of the integration points. In this part, you can see the bottom surface of the shell. The geometry of surface that is designed in the software and then is merged is called the reference surface. In the property module of Abacus, the reference surface can be on the bottom surface, like this form, that the section points are placed on it. Or the reference surface can be on the top surface, like this form, and the section points will be placed under it. Or the reference surface can be in the middle, and in this case, the mid-surface and the reference surface are in the same segment. In this simulation, we're going to use this method. Here, you can see the cross-section of the cylinder that was made by shell elements. In this part, the blue chart is showing the mechanical properties of FGM, which is defined in Abacus software. As you can see, the Young modulus changes has started from the inner radius and ends at the outer radius. Here you can see the Young modulus formula, which is a function of radius. The length of the cylinder used in the simulation is 120 mm. And as explained in Abacus, the geometry of shell elements is shown without thickness, and the thickness you see in this picture is defined in the property module for material. As a result of using 9 section points through the thickness of cylinder in this modeling, and reference surface being in the same segment with the mid-surface, the number of section points on top and bottom of reference surface are the same. The number of section points varies from 1 to 9 and the length of inner radius changes from 55 to 65. You can see in the chart on the right-hand side that by increasing radius from inside through outside, Young modulus increases. As you can recall in the previous code, in this simulation that we use shell elements to calculate the position of radius, section points and coefficients C1 and C2. 
to determine C1 and C2, input inner radius which is 55 for radius, then input outer radius which is 65 into formula. As a result, a system of linear equations is conducted. By solving it, the coefficients C1 and C2 will be found. At the bottom of the screen, you can see the Young modulus, which is a function of radius. In the orange chart, you can see the properties defined in Abacus. However, in the blue chart, field variable and state variable outputs through thickness can be seen. Here, you can see the generated radius contour in the state variable, and in this picture, the Young modulus contour defined in the field variable can be seen. Here, to model the cylinder made by shell elements, the new model is generated. From Module 1, click on Part, then for Modeling Space, I choose 3D for Type, and then I choose Deformable, then Shell, and then Extrusion. First, I make a reference point, then I insert the radius of mid-surface part, which is 60. For Depth, 120 is inserted. Now the element is generated. As you can see, the shell elements in Abacus has no thickness and they're shown without thickness. The mechanical properties generated for the previous model will be assigned to this model as well. A section shell is generated. The value of shell thickness is 10 mm, the thickness integration rule is Simpson, and the number of thickness integration points is 9. The section is to be assigned to the part. For definition, we have the options of middle surface, bottom surface, and top surface, which we explained earlier for this simulation. Paying attention to the axis of the coordinate system in this simulation is very important, since the mechanical properties are a function of space. In this part, a step is generated. The default setting of Abacus is acceptable, and I generate the step. Here, it's necessary to call the state variables and field variables. If you want to call the results in a certain section point and observe, you can click on Specify and insert the number of that section point. Since I have 9 section points, I insert each of them manually. Now I move to define the internal pressure as load. Here, the software asks you to choose a side for the shell or internal faces. I choose the inner side, that is brown. Since the model is symmetrically generated, it is necessary to claim the symmetry in the boundary condition settings. Here, you can use the full integration elements. S4 elements are assigned to the model. Before running the new model, we'll explain the code. Let's take a look at the USD FLD subroutine code. The upper and lower box are the base codes that are suggested by the abacus and shouldn't be changed. They're on default. C1 and C2 are coefficients that are evaluated by inputting radius in and radius out in the previously conducted system of linear equations. After that, in this line to calculate the radius, section points are used. In this line, the calculated Young modulus is saved in field 1, and the calculated radius is saved in state V1. Now that the code is explained, we can run the model. Before entering the visualization module, I'd like to mention one of the advantages of shell elements. Shell elements are faster than solid elements, since runtime of solid elements is 23 seconds, but the runtime of shell elements is only 13 seconds. So, shell elements reduce computational costs. It's time to observe the results. Here, you can see the radius is 55, and this shows that the output in form of section points is not completely shown. To fix this problem, click on Result, then section points, and put top and bottom for active location. By doing this, you can see all of the top and bottom surface completely, and the radius is saved in the state variable 1, and now you can see the Young modulus is saved in field variable. Here to observe the model better, you can use this option. 
To observe it completely, you can use the mirror option. To extract the value of field variable and state variable through thickness, first I save this, and you can do the same thing for state variable. The value of field variable can be saved here, field shell, and in this part for state variable shell. Here you can not only see the input of abacus as the given material, but also the output field variable and state variable of solid elements and output field variable and state variable of shell elements. And you can see the shell elements are more synchronous with abacus input. In this video, we have once solved a problem using solid elements and once using shell elements. Each of them have their pros and cons. For instance, using shell elements, we could reduce computational costs and use fewer elements to merge. I'd love to learn new things too. I'd be happy if you share your experience using shell and solid elements. In which cases is it more efficient to use shell elements and in which simulations is it more suitable to use solid elements? I would love to know your comments. Thank you for watching. Since the purpose of Hyperlyceum website is to produce high quality educational videos, I'd love to know your opinion on what our new videos should be about. Good luck and see you in the next tutorial. This video was made by Salman Hosseini. To find his contact information and his updated resume, please visit our website hyperlyceum.com. Salman is an expert in Abacus, 3Matics, Mimics, SolidWorks, Ketia, and a few other engineering software. To plan online sessions and discuss industrial and academic projects, please use the provided email under Salman's contacts. The cost of the projects vary depending on the complexity of the work and can be discussed in advance. We look forward to working with you.